Come on in, come on in. It's Wealthy You Wind Down. Good evening. Come on in. I'm looking in the chat who's hanging with us this evening. Come on in. You know what time it is. You know what time, what it's time to do. It's Wealthy You Wind Down. So I want to make sure that I give some shout outs tonight. I want to know where you're from, whether we're, we are, we are on all platforms this evening. So I want to make sure I give folks a shout out and make sure you accept the, uh, the note. You're going to get a note that says, accept our uh, technical platform. So make sure you do that so that we can celebrate you coming on in. Man, what a week I have been having. In fact, what a day. I don't know about you guys, but I just feel like we got a lot going on, but I know you've got a lot going on. And that's what Wealthy You Wind Down is really about. Winding down. So let me see who's in the room. Let me give some shout outs. Okay. Okay. We're all over, all over. So I see Evelyn from Chicago is in the house. Hello, Chi-Town. Let's see. I see Catherine Jones is with me. Let me know what city and state you're from so I can give you a shout out. Although I know some of you are from other states, are in other states, but you always shout out your hometown. Good evening. I see there are some Wealthy Ambassadors in the house. Anita's hanging with us tonight. Virginia, Tamiko's hanging with us. Karen Ellington from Cincinnati. I didn't know you were from Cincinnati, uh, Karen. Uh, welcome, Ohio, Midwestern. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see, Carol Adams, uh, one of our new Wealthy Youth Society members. Welcome, welcome, hailing from New Jersey. Uh-oh, my sister's hanging with us from the Big D, Detroit, hometown, Motown. That's right. Uh, we've got somebody from Davidson, North Carolina, Eltadena, California. Hey, Catherine, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we've got Deborah Vines from Baltimore, one of our wealthy you women. Excellent. Uh, okay, Anita's saying she's from Memphis, but I know she's from Chicago. That's all right. <laughs> I better call you out for your right hometown or folks will be mad at you, but get, good evening. Come on in here because we've got some things to talk about because I got a lot of things on my mind today, but you know how we do. And what I'm really, really excited about is you know how I love, love, love hearing the stories of our Wealthy You go-getters, right? So how many of you tuned in to Wealthy You Wind Down last week and saw our amazing, amazing panel of new uh, Wealthy You members? Did you guys see that panel and they were sharing uh, you know, how they found Wealthy You and what they expected to learn. Because I feel like that's so, so important. Uh, and then we, what? No, we actually, actually, we heard from a number of our Wealthy You members. We heard from Wendy, who just re-enrolled. Uh, and she was just sharing why and, you know, what she went through. And then Jacelyn, I thought, was just, just amazing. Jacelyn joined Wealthy You Society. Now Jacelyn up-leveled. She went to the Legacy Wealth Accelerator. And then, uh, who else? Oh, Dr. Z. Dr. Z, Dr. Zerlina. I just got to give all you a shout out. Well, guess what? We got to keep those stories coming because here's what I want all of you to know is that when... The women in Wealthy You share their story transparently. It inspires me and it's the fuel that makes me get up early, go to bed at late at night. All of the team members will tell you, oh my gosh, she's, she's texting at four o'clock and she's emailing whatever. And we're coming 
always coming up way, with ways to serve you because that's really what it's about. So a lot on my mind and a lot going on tonight. So let's get this store, this party started. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Deborah Owens. I'm founder and CEO of Wealthy You, where we help women build their first investment portfolios to seven figures and beyond so that they can achieve financial independence early and experience the level of financial success that they desire and that they deserve. That's what we do in Wealthy You. And so I'm so, so excited that you're here. Some of you may not know, but just a little bit about my background, 20 years in the investment industry. And I actually left because I felt like far too many, uh, you know, like the ultra wealthy, that top 1%, they get access to so much information that if you went knocking on the door, you would not get access to. And so this, the wealthy you community is really about helping you gain access to those same strategies so you can accelerate your fi financial growth. And that's why it's important that we share with you the stories of women who are from all walks of life who are doing just that. So that's right. Facts, all facts. So it's all about positioning yourself to win. Thank you, Tawana. So it is wealthy. You wind down. And so I want you to get your favorite beverage. I'm actually drinking a red blend this evening. So a toast to all of you. And let's get this party started. So as I told all of you, I had a lot on my mind. And I really want to set up our topic tonight. And it's really about adopting a wealth mindset. But the, here's how the story goes. So in the past couple of weeks, I've had conversations. I've had conversations with people who were considering uh, joining Wealthy You. I've had conversations with uh, some of our Wealthy You members in their strategy sessions. And I've had conversations with some of our closest friends. And something kept recurring. And I thought to myself, why is this happening? Right? So the story goes like this. I saved in my 401k for, for years. I get ready to retire. I reach out to find a financial advisor. I get some recommendations. I go and sit with the person and I don't really fully understand what they're saying, but because my friend recommended them, I feel like, hey, this person must be okay. And so lo and behold, I take my, my retirement savings that has taken me 20, 25 years, my entire career to, to build, and I put it with this person. And somehow the solution for almost every one of these people was to put them in a high commission fee product, typically an annuity. And after a few months uh, or in a managed account that you can't really understand what they have your investments in. So in the chat, tell me, what do you think the, 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 if, if, if you put your money with someone and it was hundreds of thousands of dollars and a few months later or a few weeks later, you're uncomfortable. What do you think happened to, what kind of response do you think happened with each of these individuals? What did they do? But more importantly, what would you have done if that happened to you? In the chat, tell me, what would you have done if you had invested with someone and they put you in a high commission product that you couldn't get out of, or they put you in an investment you didn't understand. In the chat, what would you do? Would you move the money? Would you stay with them even though you didn't trust them or you were fearful? Would you come out of the, the would you just take all your money out and say, I'm not gonna invest at all? I just wanna hear what your response would be if you were in their situation. What would you do? 
Okay. Oh, somebody says I didn't invest because he was very put pushy. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That was probably smart because I'll tell you what's really, really important is that if you feel uncomfortable or uncertain, follow your gut is all I'm going to tell you. Uh, Janice McKnight said, move it. Somebody else says, find out my legal recourse and reinvest. Uh, if I was fearful, I would move the funds. Okay. Uh, watch it. And if no growth, move it. Okay. That's good. A move it or looked for other options. That's right. But here's what I want you to understand is that when you don't fully understand the financial markets and investments and how they work, you're going to be fearful, right? You're going to think the worst case scenario and you're going to make the worst possible move. And what do you think the worst possible move is? The worst possible move is not to invest your money. Okay. So, so, so what I want to say is that What's really, really important and why it's important for you to have a wealth mindset, and I'm going to get into what that is in just a moment, is because then when you, first of all, if somebody, the first thing you have to have is knowledge, because if somebody presents you with an, with, with an investment opportunity, and if it's not right, you need to understand why, why it's not right. But here's what I also know and what I've seen over and over again is almost like that financial ignorance makes you financial prey for, for uh, unscrupulous advisors. Would you agree with that? Would you who, agree or disagree with me on that, right? Like, like that lack of knowledge really puts you at a disadvantage because you don't even know what you don't know. And in some cases, and I don't know in every uh, uh, case, because I didn't know what the person invested in, it may have been the, the, that those were actually investments that in the long run would work out, right? And so here's what I want you to know. And one of the first things that I realized or insights that I gained when I, uh, you know, more than 20 years ago, when I first walked in that marbled wood grain office of Merle Lynch and sat there and observing, I couldn't really do anything but observe because I had to be like a sponge, right? I had to be like a sponge so that I could learn what these people knew because I didn't, first of all, I didn't know why I didn't know it, right? But you wouldn't know it if you, nobody ever invested or if you didn't really have enough assets to, for one of those people to sit down with you, right? So one of my first observations was that wealthy people do the opposite of what most people do. And so I really wanted to set up this conversation because I want to give you three points right? Like, 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 like three ways you can adopt a wealthy mindset right now. Okay. And a wealthy mindset means that number one, and this is very, very important. The first, the first tip I want to give you is this, and it's that you cannot, you cannot follow the crowd. Are you with me? In that office, I saw that when the market went down, that wealthy people did the opposite of what most people did. So when, mo when the market goes down, what most people do is they sell, but what wealthy people do is, is buy. The second thing is that you really have to begin to look at problems as opportunities. And, you know, the point that I will make is that uh, I talk a lot about there being possibilities and volatilities. And when COVID hit, 
Many of the women in Wealthy You today are a lot wealthier because they follow this, 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 this particular step in looking at problems and opportunities. And they began to invest in companies like Moderna, like, like Zoom, like all these companies that will, were going to do well because of the pandemic, right? You got to be able to see the opportunity. And then, then lastly, and here's the most important thing, is you've got to stay the course. And so here's what I know. I know that in 2008, 2009, when we went through a really bad recession, many people saw the value of their portfolios go down. They came out of the market and they never went back in. And so for the next decade, the market has had its best performance and many of those same people are sitting on the sidelines. Whereas if they had just stood the course, they would be a lot further ahead. In many cases, their investment portfolios would have more than doubled, especially if they were investing in their portfolios. And that's why, that's why I wanted to share this with you because I want you to understand is that the way you develop, you, you're able to follow all those steps. What do you think you have to have in order to develop a wealthy mindset? Anybody want to guess in the chat? Let me know. Let me know. Comments in the comments on, on wherever you are on social media. Let me know. What do you think you have to have? Do you know the most effective, the most effective way to develop a wealthy mindset, to be able to see problems as opportunities, to not follow the crowd? What do you think is Self-confidence, that's good. An open mind, knowledge and patience. That's it. That's it. Knowledge pays the best investments. That's what I'm going to tell you. And so in all thy getting, get wisdom, right? And, 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 and the practical application, just getting knowledge isn't enough, right? Like it's the practical application of that knowledge that's most important. And so I wanted to share those three tips with you because I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be just much more uh, cognizant of kind of things that are happening because I know if it's happening to people over and over that it's probably happen happening to you. And that's why I'm really, really excited to bring our next Wealthy You Go-Getter on because I truly believe that she is an example of what happens when you allow yourself to move forward in, in spite of any fears that you may have. So let's bring uh, Angela Bracey to the stage with me, one of our wealthy you go getters. Angela, thank you so much for coming in because I love having these conversations. You're welcome. So, tell, 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 how did you find wealthy you? Share that with us. I was on a journey looking for ways to save money, to check my credit score and get it up and running. And I had just joined Facebook. Um, I left Facebook previously and then I came back and I ran across Wealthy You. And when I ran across Wealthy You, I looked at it a couple days and then afterwards I was like, I think I want to join. Okay. So, okay, so I joined, you joined the, community. the Wealthy You community? Okay. The you community. Joined I joined the Wealthy You community and then I stirred around and continue to research. And I said, she sounds like she knows what she's talking about. I think I like her. So then I think it was maybe two weeks later, I joined the society. Okay. You joined the Wealthy Youth Society. And then what happened? So afterwards, I became a little hesitant. And I said, that's a lot of money. I don't know if Invest in myself and this program is going to work for me. 
So I withdrew. I canceled. You canceled on like the 29th day. And so, so, so talk to me a little bit about how you were feeling, you know, because you, you searched, you found us. And then you, you were like, oh, I just invested this money. I don't know. So what, what were you feeling then? What was the I, was, I think I was um, very nervous because it was a lot of money and there were a lot of other programs that I looked into and did the same thing. And I didn't like those programs at all. That feeling was just not there. I didn't have the connections or anything. And I think what really stood out with me was um, after I canceled, uh, Deborah called me. And she called me and we had a conversation, not a few words. We had a conversation and it was why I wanted to join and what I wanted to do and what my goals were and all of those things. And I felt comfortable. And so when did you come back? When did you come back? So you canceled. We had a conversation. And then when did you come back? I think it may have been a month later. It was. It it wasn't that far because I still began to lurk and and followed you. Okay. (laughs) It wasn't that far afterwards. I came back. Okay. So you came back. So, so while you were, once you canceled and you left, did you go looking for other things? Were there other things that were less expensive? What did you do? I look at Motley Fool. I looked at everything on YouTube. There was. Everything on Facebook that says something about money, black business, or so whatever it is, everything. I looked, but I ended up coming back to Wealthy You. Oh, okay. And I think it was because of the, it was black sisters. Oh. And I said that there were other women like me that was interested. So I was interested in the sisterhood. I love it. I love it. That's why I wanted you to come in because I wanted women to see that it's okay for you to feel that way. It's okay for you to feel that way. We know that. I just had a meeting with the ambassadors last night talking about this very thing, the apprehension that black women have about investing in themselves. And and, I mean, we get it. We get it. Like we will spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on a formal education but when we when it comes to really investing in ourselves now, so so I all I want to say is I'm grateful. That's why I wanted you to come is to to share your story. Okay, Angela. So you come into wealthy you, you're back. What do you do? What do you do? There were, there were a couple of things that I did. Uh, one of the things that we did during our conversation before I came back was we went over my. Um, employer's plan for retirement. And with that, there were several things that the investors had chosen for me and I had no idea what they were. I really didn't look periodically. Um, I invested the very minimum to just have something because I had no idea about it. So after joining, um, I changed those stocks around. I um, found other things as well. I purchased a house. I had it refinanced. And then um, afterwards, I think we were working some overtime or something. And afterwards, I was like, okay, what am I going to do with this money? Where is it going to go? And so I increased my retirement plan. And I went up by 100%. Wow. And then afterwards, I went up 200%. Oh, okay. And this what I amazing. realized in doing that was because I always thought that if I gave more money in my retirement plan, that my check would be lower and I would not be able to survive on it. And what I did not realize was the more money I put into my retirement plan was it lowered my tax bracket. So I was paying less in taxes and I was actually able to survive off of that. And then after that, being in my house for a year, I refinanced it. And then I opened up a E-Trade account and then I opened up a Cash App account. And 
then I just kept looking. So now I am in the process of, and I still haven't done it, switching my cash app to Fidelity. I, 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 so, so here, and so, so, so just share with us. And so you started when in. It was a year ago, almost maybe 10 months ago. Okay. Maybe 10 months ago. And so since then, I'm just curious to know, and you don't have to say the dollar amount, but how, what percentage are you up? Like, like how much have you, how much more do you have than what you had when you started Wealthy You from a percentage? Is, have you doubled the amount you had for retirement or how much? I have not doubled it as of yet, but I'm very close. So you're close to almost double of what you started out with. Amazing. And this and- is all. Only- it and only unfortunately, two I did not even know about the percentages. I just kept looking at dollars like I, I need to increase it. So even, you know, when you and I talked, I was like, OK. And I think I told you I felt like I wanted to shout the hallelujah dance. Yes, yes. And that's what I, why I wanted you to have you on, because I just want you. You are like you did exactly what you're supposed to do on Wealthy You. Right. So the first thing we call it mindset. Right. So you really did have to get over your fear. Right. And I'll be honest with you. When people cancel, I want to hear why. Right. Because we can learn from that as a as a company. Right. Like, what are we not doing? Like, did something happen? Is there something else we could have done? But at the end of the day, you you know, what are you know, like you didn't feel like you could, you know, go on it. And, and, and I'm not, you know, like we don't really do refunds, but uh, the other side of that is like, I focus on women having the right mindset and wealthy you too, right? Like, like I want you to belong and I want you to really feel like we're, we're making an impact. But I would say that mindset changed. You, you, once we chatted, I really felt like, and I could show you what you were missing, right? Like, like it, so, so I often say this, Angela, sometimes we don't even know what we don't know, right? So when you, when we had that conversation, that sort of portfolio review, and by the way, one of the things I talked with the team about is, that that is now going to be one of our offerings, right? So for some of you out here, like you don't even know what you don't know. And I know within, uh, you know, within, what do you say, Angela, 10 or 15 minutes, like it was like, boom, 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 boom. And this is what, girl, you need to, you could be doing blah, 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 right? Okay. <laughs> and you were like, and you had a lot of different opportunities, didn't you? I had some things, yes. <laughs> I mean, just in terms of some of the investments in your that you had as a choice in your portfolio, you And I think at that not- time I had maybe 10 or 15 altogether in one in my retirement plan. Yeah, I mean, like the investments that you had, Brown Capital Management, I mean, you had some excellent funds that you weren't really taking uh, advantage of. That is true. Right? So, uh, yeah, let me just let folks know, if you're just joining us, this is Wealthy You Wind Down, and we're having a Wealthy You Go Getter segment, segment. I love, love, love these segments because our members get to kind of share their transformation with you. And so if you're just tuning tuning in, I'm Deborah Owens. I am founder of Wealthy You, where we teach women how to build their first investment p- portfolios to seven figures and beyond. And Angela is certainly on her way. And so Angela, um, so I, I said you're a textbook case because you mindset and then strategy. I mean, once you like 
you know, we have these milestones, right? Figure out your wealth gap, where you are, right? And the next step was analyzing what you have. And once you did that, you did see the opportunity, right? So what did you do once you started? Um, what was the, the, the cause of you or what do I, the catalyst for you just moving that money up, increasing the amount that you were investing? What was the catalyst for that? Was it seeing how your money was growing or what, what was, how did you get this momentum? I, um, previously I handled my money very poorly and I made some very bad choices. And in that I had to regain or rebuild my credit and then after that, um, I began to think, okay, well, I have, at that point, I think it was nine years before I, I can, I am eligible to retire. So my whole mindset was, what am I going to do to retire? And I don't want to go back to work afterwards. So how can I do this and stay on track and move forward? I love it. So the goal was to... And that's what I said to, to uh, accelerate your financial growth so you could experience financial independence earlier. Uh, so let me go through these comments, though. Uh, let's see. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah. And OK, so I see Wendy. Ha we have another person who just rejoined. She she stopped because of COVID and her husband had had, you know, a, a sort of fur furlough thing. But she's she's giving us all the praise now talking about I'm in and paid in full. I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, go, go, go. Everybody's so happy for you. Carol a Adam said, I understand her hesitation, but I joined to invest in myself. That's you know what, Carol, she kind of reminds me of you, sort of the conversation that we we would, uh, that we had the best decision you ever made, Angela. So, so lastly, what advice would you give to women just about investing in themselves? What, what advice would you give? I think investing in yourself is probably, you know, you invest in so many other things. You invest in your education, you invest when you go to church, you give your 10%. You invest in your house, whether it it works out or it fails. You invest in your cars, you invest in your children. Why not invest in yourself? And and then, you know, I've been really focused on legacy. And, you know, my, my mother recently passed, Angela. And, um, you know, I begin to think about my own children and what I will leave them. And so with the knowledge that you gain now, what, what do you think you now have a value to pass on to, to your own family? Um, I think there is still more that I want to learn, but I pass it on to anybody that I see. I'm telling them to invest, to put more money into their investments because you can pay less in your taxes. Um, to look forward for your, you know, the future. And if you compare, because I, I want to get into, you know, like this is more than money. I often say this about wealthy you. What I find is that it 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 it, it gives it gives you a sense of it changes the way that you're looking at the world. So if you were to look at yourself prior to the experience that you have in wealth had in wealthy you versus now, what do you think is the biggest impact that it's made on your life? Wow. Um, it definitely makes me look at how I spend my money more and what I spend it on. Um, a lot of things that I thought were wants actually were a lot of needs. To explain that to me more, what so so give me an example of that. So I've never been materialistic, but if it's something at the store and I see it, regardless whether it's food or if it's something to do a hobby or whatever, and I'm like, I need that. 
But now that I turn around and look at all of the things that I have accumulated, many of those things I don't need. Ah, so you know what we call that. And we call that in wealthy you is that, that wealth mindset shift, right? Like you begin to be more intentional and more purpose, purposeful about the impact of what you're spending your money on today and what it, you know, and, and the value that it really has, right? What is the long-term impact? Is that going to pay you a return? I love, I love, I love it. So lastly, just one uh, so, so we talked about wealthy you. Uh, what else do you want to learn? What else do you want to learn? I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by that around investing. I am into learning anything that I can actually about finances, and I'm actually taking a finance class as well. Um, but just anything. Um, I have not been. Um, I have not been the student that I should be in the analyzing of stocks, but analyzing more terminology, uh, what I can do more of, what I should do less of, any and everything regarding finance. I love it. I love it. Well, Angela, I just want to thank you for coming on this uh, uh, evening. The point that I wanted to make was you have really hit those milestones and that's really what it's about in Wealthy You. First, identifying what you want. You said, hey, I want, I know I can, I'm eligible for retirement in nine years. That's my target. The next is, okay, now let me take a look at what I have. So it was analyzing what are your opportunities, you know, and that opportunity was, I often say this, sometimes it's like you're sitting 10 feet away from gold, right? And so really looking at your retirement plan and seeing the different options that you have, and then you, the next thing is increase your contributions. And you know what the next milestone is? It's building that investment portfolio. So you're already talking about moving your cash app, opening up your Fidelity account. So guess what? Uh, what I said to Angela, I said, Angela, you know what? I know you're going to be one of our wealthy U ambassadors because you have modeled the behavior and it's just a matter of time. So Angela, I want to thank you so much for coming on Wealthy You Go Getter Spotlight and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what, do you, what did you guys think about Angela's story? And I, I really want to kind of dissect what Angela just said you know, that story, because those, if we think about the stories, even that we heard last week, we hear it over and over again. And here's what I want all of you to know is that many of you are searching for something somehow to help you move beyond your, your current circumstances and achieve financial success. And so often what happens is because we don't know what we don't know, we don't have, right, we're not in the right circle or we don't get access to that information. So, you know, here's what I want to tell you, the truth about wealth. And the truth about wealth is that the ultra wealthy get access to the same strategies that you learn in wealthy you. And that is they learn how that that is not earning a lot of income. Like what we try to do is just bust those myths. That old way of thinking about what things that you know that college, more college, more income, all of that is going to help you achieve financial success. That's really not how you 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 build wealth or you build a legacy. The way you build a legacy is turning your income into wealth. And so for many of you, it means that the easiest way to do that is if you're employed with an employer is start right where you are, right? But, but it's not enough to just allow yourself to be put in these plans that aren't earning a high return, right? Many of you are in these life cycle or target date funds or, or, probably out of all the things that you could be in a stable value fund that pays you no kind of return, right? Literally none. 
Uh, so you have got to be able to assess what your opportunities are. And if you don't have those opportunities, then you're going to have to find them for yourself. And sometimes many that means you not just taking whatever is easy or whatever they're opting you into, because let's face it, and that's what all of you have to face, that the financial services industry, they make money off of what you put your money in, right? And so, I mean, I was in that industry for my entire career, but you don't necessarily get the kinds of returns that you should if you don't do the work. If you don't have access to a private banker or somebody who's getting you in to the best deals, then you're not going to have those opportunities. But guess what? You can make those opportunities for yourself. Now more than ever, those opportunities are available to you, but you have to learn how to assess them for yourselves. And so the reason that all of the women that come through Wealthy You are able to share their stories about how they have fundamentally changed their own financial trajectory is because of what they not only learn, but what they apply. And so that's why I'm so, so excited to bring you these stories each week to share for, for, you know, because it's difficult sometimes for uh, people to be transparent. I mean, many of you are have family members that are doing well, but they're not sharing it with you. So that's what this community is about. So we have an amazing, amazing masterclass coming up where you're going to hear from some more amazing wealthy you goal getters. And it's all around legacy wealth starting us out. It's the whole focus of it is claiming your inheritance. In order to do that, you got to get the right mindset. So we have uh, an amazing keynote speaker. You want to sign up because you don't want to miss out because we only have limited capacity. The first 100 people get a signed copy of, not a signed copy, but get a hard copy of our keynote speaker, Minda Hart's book. So I right now we have the girlfriend discount going on, okay? Girlfriend discount. So I want you to get you and a girlfriend. I want you to go to Wealthy You Masterclass. You will you put girlfriend in, and you will both get the discount. So if you thought Angela's story was amazing, I can't wait for you to hear some of the story of women who are, you know, at a half a million running for seven figures. You're going to meet some amazing women. I am going to be training you on mass mindset strategy execution, the same things that you hear applied over and over again. And when you walk out of there, you are going to have your financial roadmap to success. So I can't wait to see you at the Wealthy You Masterclass. Sign up now. Remember, Use the code girlfriend. I need you to get a girlfriend. Use the code girlfriend and sign up. And I can't wait to see you at our Wealthy You Masterclass on October 30th. It's virtual. It goes all day. We jam all day. We got our DJ Sean J coming back. It's going to be an amazing day. And you're going to go away even more expired, inspired and ready to accelerate your financial growth. So thank you for joining me on Wealthy You Wind Down. I'm Deborah Owens. I'm founder of Wealthy You, where we help women build their first investment portfolios to seven figures and beyond so that they can achieve financial independence earlier and achieve the level of financial success that they desire and they deserve.